All right, so it's time now for our main talk. Our main talk presenter is someone we all know has been a longtime member of the community, many time a speaker uh, for Community Moment. Today he's doing a main talk. Um, Lou Kana is going to be exploring one of our core values, reality is known through reason, by taking us on an adventure about conspiracy theories, hoaxes, and myths. Everybody, please welcome Mr. Lou Kana. Morning, everybody. When, um, when I started to put together this talk, it was, you hear me now? Okay. How's that? Even now I can hear it. Um, originally, this was only going to be about conspiracy theories. And there certainly is enough material out there for that. Anybody in here could talk forever about conspiracy theories. But then I looked in the dictionary for a definition, and I realized that the definition of hoaxes and myths and conspiracy theories have some overlap. And as I'm doing my presentation, I'll show you something that is, I think is a hoax, and you're going to say, oh, no, 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 that's a conspiracy theory. So, so and then you'll see what I mean about the overlap. Okay, so. Hooray, okay. Talk about myths briefly. Um, definition, a myth is an ill-founded belief held uncritically by an interesting group, interested group. Its existence is imaginary. So you all know about the myths about Sasquatch, Bigfoot, etc. So can you read that? It's theoretically the Loch Ness monster saying to this guy, "You're gonna want to snap a photo." Um, what's interesting about myths is they're disproven, and then ten years later they come back. They, they have an enormous shelf life. I have no idea why. So, I think the most fun subject is hoaxes. This is one where I'm going to tell you about a hoax and you're going to say, no, that's not a hoax. We'll see. Okay, definition of a hoax is an act intended to trick or dupe. Okay, you all heard of the Flat Earth Society? It has 4,000 members. They all believe the Earth is flat. And in August, they had their second annual international conference. So it's not just this country. Um, I equate these people with the creationists, people who think via the Bible that the earth is no more than 10,000 years old, but they can't prove it. And the Flat Earth Society can't prove that the earth is flat, but they're convinced nevertheless. Um, some people think that if it's not part of their experience, it can't be true. Stephen Hawking designed an experiment to prove that the Earth is not flat. You can see that on the Discovery Channel. Um, it's called Flat Earth Crushed. Um, also, CBS Sunday Morning. By the way, there's a program that's on every Sunday morning called CBS Sunday Morning. Um, I've gotten probably a half a dozen community moments out of that program. So if you want to do a presentation for Oasis, watch that program, and you'll get all kinds of juicy ideas. Um, let's see. A few weeks ago, they did a short piece, seven minutes long, on the Flat Earth Society. Uh, it's still available online. If you go to the web and you go to CBS Sunday morning, you can Google Flat Earth, and it'll bring up the video. Um, so, 
Um, interesting group of people. One of their members lives in Southern California, who'd have thunk it, California. Um, and he decided to, to prove or disprove the Flat Earth Society concept. So he built a rocket. The guy's a limo driver, but he's got good technical skills. So he built a rocket, and he went up in the rocket 1,800 feet. And he survived. He came down in a parachute. The problem is, you can't tell whether or not the Earth is flat or curved at 1,800 feet. It's just not high enough. His next rocket's going to take him up 62 miles. <laughs> good, good luck to him. All right, well, that'll be the last we ever see of him. Um, so on this, uh, on this program on CBS Sunday Morning, they did an interview with one of the principals. Um, this woman, seemingly very educated, and they asked her some questions about the Flat Earth Society. And they said, for instance, did um, man land on the moon? Nope. Uh, what about all those pictures we've seen of the big blue marble and other stuff like that? And she said, quote, all the pictures from NASA are a hoax, which is why I put this into the hoax category. So, I hope you can read that. Um, this is a earth, the earth is talking and it's saying, of course I'm round. Just because I don't feel like showing you my backside doesn't mean I'm not round. Okay. Some people think climate change is a hoax. Understand there is a difference between climate change and man-made climate change. They're not quite the same thing, are they? For instance, as best we know, we've had at least four ice ages, which means at any given time, we're in an ice age. Either the ice is getting closer to us, in which case we're getting colder, or it's receding in which case it's getting warmer. So it would seem right now that, you know, we're getting warmer because the ice is receding. Um, nevertheless, this is a fact. Nevertheless, um, Rush Limbaugh, President Trump, and Rick Scott, the governor of Florida, all have said that climate change is a hoax. Notice they're not saying man-made climate change is a hoax. So they're kind of playing both sides. Okay, we'll get down to conspiracy theories, which is, of the three, the one that's, I think, the most dangerous. Um, what happens with a lot of conspiracy theories is they get disproven over time. The problem is, I think, is because our modern communications uh, tools are so immediate, we, somebody spreads a rumor or a conspiracy, and then it's not till some time later where it's disproven. So in the interim, a lot of people have made up their mind that it really is a conspiracy. So, For instance, um, uh, there are some conspiracy theories that are actually good in a way. For instance, 54% of Americans think that the Kennedy assassination was some sort of government cover-up. 54%. That's a lot. Now, one thing that that has led to is there was an, inv an investigation on the Kennedy assassination, the Warren Committee. So if so many people didn't think it was a cover-up, maybe there wouldn't have been a Warren uh, Commission trying to figure out whether or not it really happened. Um, similarly, one person in three thinks the government is hiding the truth about 9-11. I don't know. 
Subsequently, there's been lots of investigations about what really happened at 9-11. So maybe conspiracy theories aren't really so bad. There are some, however, that are downright dangerous. I'm sure you can't see that. I had a heck of a time trying to get it on the screen. But uh, there's a guy lying on a sofa, and he's looking at a smartphone, and his wife sticking her nose in says, you're upset that your conspiracy theory isn't catching on, aren't you? This is, to my knowledge, the most dangerous conspiracy theory ever. Anybody here who has children in school or knows children who are in school must realize that your children may be exposed to somebody who didn't get a vaccination. Measles, mumps, rubella. Those are required. It so happens that, and this is back to the coincidence thing, children usually get the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine around age two. That's about the time that children are discovered who are autistic. So you can understand why some parents think that the vaccination caused autism. By the way, um, I get a kick out of this on uh, conspiracy theories. There are a lot of people who think Elvis is alive and Paul McCartney is dead. Go figure. Okay, back to the childhood vaccines cause autism. There is no scientific evidence linking vaccinations with autism. In fact, the initial report originally published in England describing the link between MMR, measles, mumps, rubella, vaccine was refuted by large-scale studies and eventually retracted by the journal. Of course, by that time, it hit the web and went viral and, yeah. The notion of the link arose from the coincidental timeline of autism development. The disease tends to emerge around the timeline that the MMR vaccine is given, thus creating a link. The absence of this link has been confirmed by metadata which is an aggregation of major studies over a period of time, effectively closing the case on this misinformation. Uh, by the way, I should give you a definition of a conspiracy theory. A conspiracy theory is an explanation of an event or situation that invokes a conspiracy, generally one involving an illegal or harmful act supposedly carried out by government or other powerful actors without credible evidence. Okay. I read in the Chronicle the other day, there's a chickenpox outbreak in North Carolina. The epicenter is a school where many children have not been vaccinated. 36 kids have come down with chickenpox. 110 of 152 students have not been vaccinated because of a religious or medical exemption. It's the worst outbreak in two de decades in North Carolina. It's um, chickenpox is highly contagious, and um, you, it can lead to shingles in adults, which is why I get the shingles vaccine. Supposed to get the next one. Okay, well, the problem with the studies that showed that um, that vaccine doesn't cause um, autism was largely published in scientific journals. Most people don't read those. If it was in the newspaper, most people wouldn't read it. So, this is what I think really happened. Jenny McCarthy is an entertainer, a singer, actress, very attractive. And she had a child that was diagnosed with autism 
and he immediately went on the web and Twitter and said the vaccine caused autism. She seemed to think that she couldn't have a child with autism. So, Ms. McCarthy says her son is autistic. She has been very clear that she believed vaccines played a role in her son's dis condition, although of late she stopped discussing it quite so much. She also claimed in 2008, along with Jim Carrey, that they cured him with the help of a gluten-free diet. Good luck. So I got a kick out of this. Can you read this? Pip, certainly not at the back. Okay. Here's a newscaster. Okay, well now I can't read it. No. <laughs> okay, we have a newscaster who's saying, a new study revealed that 90% of anti-vacciners admit they would change their views if vaccines came in cake form. Cake form, yeah. When, we're so bad about it if it was tasted like cake. Okay, now, um, probably second to the anti-vax is gay conversion theory, therapy. Um, conversion therapy is a pseudo-scientific practice of trying to change an individual's sexual orientation from homosexual or bisexual to heterosexual using psychological test. test. Okay, so you heard a myth or a hoax or a, um, conspiracy theory, and you don't know if it's true. Where does everybody go? I'm sorry. Where does everybody go? You go to Snopes. Anybody know what Snopes is? It's a website, and it's, it's pretty good. It's not theory. So if you go to Snopes, S-N-O-P-E-S, Dot com. Yeah. I really, really can't do two things at once. Yeah. So if you go to Snopes.com, even though they've categorized everything, you can type in something that you think might be a hoax or, you know, um, and they'll tell you the real story. So I've been using Snopes for years. It's a, Snopes is also called the Urban Legends Reference Page. Now, um, I discovered another Snopes, so to speak. This is rbutr.com. Maybe that's rebuttal, I don't know. Okay. What's nice about uh, Buter is a community-driven system which maps the links between web pages where the content of one page is a critical response to the other. So it's a little bit about like Snopes, except there are responses to statements made and you go back and forth. So it's a good kind of community dialogue about hoaxes and conspiracies and et cetera. I don't think it's on anymore, but there was a television program uh, sponsored by Adam Savage called Tested. Um, and it was two guys trying to prove or disprove almost anything. Um, for instance, uh, one of the more elaborate 
ideas was um, Bill Cosby once said he wants to know what would happen if he was in an elevator that was crashing down, what would happen if he jumped up just before it hit the bottom? These guys proved it, all right? You're gonna die. But they actually built an elevator out of an old silo and put a dummy in it and just let it go free fall. So um, the, uh, the podcast that these guys have created is called This Is Only a Test. It's based on the TV program, which I don't think is on anymore, but you can see there a series of videos on some of the experiments they did. Okay. This is where you don't go for information. Infowars. Um, this is hosted by Alex Jones, and he's the one who said that the murder of the children in Connecticut didn't happen. So it's the hoax. So if you want to get misinformation, go to this website. Every once in a while, they'll refute something they said, but it's a bad idea. Yeah, the uh, particular video about autism and vaccines has been taken down by YouTube. It's just, just too dangerous. Okay, um, I don't have enough time to show you. However, if you go to the website CBS Sunday Morning and you type in Flat Earth Society, you can see the video, it's about seven minutes long, about the Flat Earth Society, why they think the Earth is flat. You can see the interview with this lady who was like a spokesperson. She's the one that said that NASA is a hoax, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this morning, it's kind of late for me, but there was on CBS Sunday morning a presentation about, guess what, conspiracy theories. So um, it's pretty interesting. Um, had I seen that first, it would have changed my presentation, but uh, hindsight is 2020. Um, okay, questions? Want to do it a little later? Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Lou.